Today I'm going to talk about three easy to observe phenomenon. One of them fairly subtle, two of them really obvious. The first obvious one is on the screen in front of you right now. That is um, phases of the moon. So in this model you see the girl here, she's holding a styrofoam ball. Off in this direction is a bright light representing the sun here. And if she moves this ball around to different positions and she looks at the ball, the side of the ball that's facing her, she's going to observe these different light patterns. When she's holding the ball right here, the side of the ball that's away from her is illuminated. So she's going to not observe any of the light and that's just represented by this blank box right here. As she moves the ball over, she's going to see a little bit of it lit on the right hand side. As she moves it over even farther, she's going to see the right hand portion lit, the left hand portion dark, and so on. Until when she moves it behind her and she actually turns around. If she could somehow hold the ball back here right now, she obviously wouldn't see it. So she has to turn around as well and look at it. And then she sees it fully illuminated. And then as the pattern continues, she's going to see these patterns. If you went out and asked people on the street what causes the moon phases, a lot of people would say it's the Earth's shadow. That sort of makes sense with the crescent phase because this almost does look like there's a round object that's blocking part of the moon. Same with over here. But crescent, uh, uh, the blocking of the moon by the Earth doesn't really make sense here with this flat shadow and certainly doesn't make sense here with this gibbous phase. The better explanation, of course, is that the Earth is not blocking the Moon. In fact, the Earth is only between the Sun and the Moon for this phase back here. So you might wonder, how can this phase be lit at all? We'll be talking about that next. But really what's causing the Moon phases is the different perspective between the Moon, the Sun, which is over here, and the Earth. If we were to get in a spaceship here and we were to look down at the moon, notice all of these phases from our point of view look the same. The half that's closer to the sun is lit, the half that's farther away from the sun is not lit. This is a very static showing. If you want to see something that's more dynamic, there are some great simulations at this website right here that will help you. I mentioned the full moon phase, I actually didn't call it the full moon phase, but it was listed on that last slide, is the phase that was behind that girl's head. So you might ask, if that phase is behind the girl's head, why isn't the girl's head blocking it? Or with the Earth, Sun, and Moon, if the Earth is between the Moon and the Sun, why isn't the Earth blocking the light from reaching the Moon? That's because the Moon, the Moon's orbit is on a tilted plate. So this shows this. This shows some water. And think of the water as the plane that cuts through the middle of the sun and cuts through the middle of the earth. So in here that would be my arm. The moon also is on a plate. That plate though is not directly in line with the earth-sun plate. They're not coplanar. But the moon's plate is tilted slightly. And I've exaggerated the tilt. It's actually tilted about five degrees. So that means as the moon goes around the Earth, sometimes the moon is below the Earth-Sun plane, in this analogy below water. Sometimes it's above the Earth-Sun plane, in this case above water. So when the moon is between the Earth and the Sun, but below the Earth-Sun plane, it's not going to be blocking the sunlight. When the moon is behind the Earth, but above the Earth-Sun plane, the Earth is not going to block the moonlight. That only happens, that blocking only happens two times a year. Those are the so-called eclipse seasons. So over here, the new moon is going to be directly between the Earth and the Sun, and there's the potential for a total solar eclipse or a partial solar eclipse. We'll talk about that in a minute. When the moon is behind the Earth, here and in the Earth-Sun plane we could potentially get a lunar eclipse. So that happens here and it happens over here. 
you might ask yourself, well, what seasons are those? Those seasons shift slightly from year to year. So every year at the exact same time is not eclipse season. These two times, and actually the rest of the year, this is just showing two other times in which the moon would be either above or below the Earth-Sun plane. We're not going to have eclipses. Uh, this is showing a uh, lunar eclipse, but it's also uh, time, but it's also labeling the shadow. The darkest shadow is called the umbra. The partial shadow is called the penumbra. Here are the three possible lunar eclipses. When the moon is in the total, the darkest shadow, that's a total lunar eclipse. When it's partially in that dark shadow, that is a, a partial lunar eclipse. And when the moon is in the partial shadow, that's called a penumbral lunar eclipse because it's in the penumbra or partial shadow. And if that happens, you rarely notice uh, anything. Took a little break there. Uh, here is a, uh, a diagram of a total solar eclipse. So before was the lunar eclipse. Notice here the moon is between the Earth and the Sun. If you're in this very narrow band in which the your place on the Earth is completely within the moon's shadow, you're going to see a total solar eclipse. So that's right there. If you're in one of those places where the moon is blocking part of the sun, you're going to see a partial solar eclipse. And if you're in a place here where the earth is right, where your part of the earth is behind the, the moon, but the moon is a little bit too far away, so it's too small to completely block the sun, you get, what call, you get what's called an annular solar eclipse. So not annular because it comes by the year, but annular based on the Latin word for ring. This is sort of like a tree ring, an annulus. So that's the annular solar eclipse. The third phenomenon to talk about, which is a lot more subtle, is a retrograde motion. The If you were to take a picture each night of one of the outermost planets. Here's an example here of Mars. You would notice that Mars would shift a little bit from night to night. So here's an example from a past year. Mars is moving along through June up to July. And again, this doesn't always happen the same time of year. But every so often, and again, that every so often depends on which planet you're talking about, the planet is going to appear to move backwards or retrograde with respect to the stars. And then after a few weeks, again, depending on which planet we're talking about, it's going to move forward again. So this represents taking a picture of a planet from night to night throughout a few weeks period. This is the real information. So how does this, how is this described then? Um, by a diagram. So here are two corresponding diagrams. First one shows two people walking around a track. Here's a person on the inner track walking faster. Here's a person on the outer track walking slower. So the person in the blue shirt is going to be passing up the person in the red shirt. This is just a, a, a background wall. So if you, if this person were to shoot a laser beam, or if a bunch of people were standing along the wall looking, this is what they would see. So in position one, this person's uh, going to see, uh, the person in the blue is going to see the person in red on this part of the wall. So here the person is in blue is going to see the person in red in this part of the wall. Uh, position three, this part of the wall. But as the person in the blue moves to position four, they're actually passing up the person in the red. So notice how that person appears to be going backwards. Position five, same sort of thing. The person in red appears to be going backwards compared to the person in the blue. By the time the person has complete in blue has completely passed the person in red, then 
that person in red starts appearing forwards um, to be moving forwards again. So while the person in blue is passing up the person in red, that is called retrograde motion. Here's that same diagram, but with planets instead. And instead of a wall in the background, here we are with the constellations in the background. So right here, the outer planet appears to be moving backwards on the border between the constellation Cancer and Leo. And thank you for watching that. If you need to watch it again, slow it down, feel free to do so.